Hiya, and welcome back to Tennis Ace, the game that teaches us that... Uh... Anyways, let's just hop right in. I snapped myself away from my thoughts, looking back down from the ceiling. You got here before us? Before us? What are you guys doing here? F we got the message from Aki-kun saying Yuichi had been in an accident and was here. Isn't that why you're here? I... How come you got here so fast? mizuguji san and I literally got here in less than ten minutes. Really? That... That was fast. Yeah, we were already hanging out in town, so we just hopped on a taxi and got here. A... Taxi? If you're feeling so bad that you want to rush home, then we should really grab a taxi. No, I I can walk. I want to walk. I don't need help. Ah. Uh, Yuichi-san. Jun-kun? Huh? Are you alright? You zoned out completely just now. Actually, now that I notice, what, what happened to you? You're all scuffed and scratched and your shirt is even torn around your elbow. Hearing that... I reflexively reach for my arm again, this time managing to hold it from wincing in pain when I still, when I touch the still stinging, fresh scratching from there. I'm like adjusting my microphone. I, I'm, it's, f f What happened to you? It couldn't be, were you and Yuichi together when, <laughs> I, I, no way! Are are you all right? Did you get hurt too? Did you get checked out at all? Why weren't Why aren't you in a room of your own? I. I. Easy there, Mizuguchi san. Can't you see he's already overwhelmed as it is? But, Jun Kun, do you need anything? Can I get you something to drink? I shake my head, trying desperately to fix my breathing. I I can do this. I can stay strong. I can't let anyone see. I... Jun-kun. Please, take a second to breathe. You're hyperventilating. I... Here, let me help. Keisuke-san kneels in front of me, looking up at my face with a smile. He reaches up, placing a hand on my chest. My eyes shoot wide, open wide right away. Focus on my hand. Try to move it up and down slowly with your chest. Take deep breath. Stop it! <laughs> Before I realize, my body moves to push the hand away from me. What? What did I picture Yuichi-san in my mind just now? Am I seeing things? W what's wrong? I... I don't... Please... Please, don't start talking like Yuichi-san too. I, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have touched you without permission. I need to say something. I should tell them. I need to tell them! Why is my mind spinning so much? I feel like I'm going to be sick! I, I can't come up with words. Even though my mind is going so fast, I can't say any word, the words I think. Junkun, please try to breathe. You're scaring me. Yeah, you're not going to run out of air. Just, just try to calm down. Calm down? How am I supposed to calm down? Yuji-san is... He's never going to play tennis again. He's going to have to go through surgery. And, and I'm the one who put him here. How, how can I calm down? How can I forgive myself? Should I go ask a nurse for help? Maybe. They might- No! Please, don't! I nearly jump out of my chair, grabbing Sayuchi-san by her wrist. I- I can't deal with them right now. They might want to admit me again, and I- I can't. W what's wrong? I'll be fine. I just- A second. Come on, Kobayashi. You can do this. You know how to do this. Just- Just smile. That's all you're good for. Make yourself smile. Are you sure? You don't seem fine. D just shook up. It makes sense, especially if you were there when it happened. But what happened? Mizukuchi-san, not now. Right, right, my bad. I think I'm going to ask about Yuichi at the front desk. Stay with Chun-kun? Yeah. Sai-san walks out of sight, turning around the corner, occasionally looking up at the directional arrows hanging from the ceiling. Hey, is it alright if I sit next to you? I nod. Right now, I'm trying my best to resist the urge to hug my knees and ignore everyone around me. If I did that, I'd only seem even more suspicious. Are you feeling better? Your breathing's back to normal. I nod again, my eyes focusing straight down at my feet. At least you didn't get hurt, too. 
That's always such a relief. Thank you. Of course. Case face on is being so warm. I'm not used to seeing him be like this. It's nice. Did you get the chance to talk to Michimiya-san and Akiyoshi-san? Or were they already upstairs with Yuichi-san by the time you got here? Actually, no, never mind. That's a stupid question. If if you were with Yuichi-san before, then... Sorry, I'm running my mouth here. I shake my head, swallowing loudly a few times, trying to give myself the courage to speak up. It helps. Thanks. Does it? You don't look like you're being helped much. Ah. Uh, Am I being that obvious? That's no good. I need to hide it better. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just a little bit out of it. A bit overwhelmed. Is that it? I guess that would make sense. You have been through a lot today. Sorry for doubting you. It's alright. You don't need to worry about me. We're here for Yuichi-san, after all. Keisuke-san gets the closest I could expect to an enthusiastic nod given the situation. Even though it's strained for, from concern, with the corner of his mouth twitching a little, his smile is genuine, I can tell. You're right. Thank you, Jun-san. Of course. I mimic the words he said earlier, trying my best to sound peppy when I say so. With where we are and what's happened, no one would suspect it even if I can't do it perfectly. Heh. <laughs> now I'm feeling relieved because the situation is a good cover for me? That's... Messed up. Hopefully they'll let us in soon so we can see Yuichi-san soon. About that... They'll only talk to family. I should have spoken up about that before Sai-san left. Sorry, I was still a bit... Is that so? I guess it makes sense. And you have nothing to apologize for. You're still in shock. Nothing to apologize for, huh? Didn't Yuichi-san's family let you go with them to see him? If you're already here when they arrived and all, they did. I had a panic attack when... When? Right, sorry, I shouldn't be bombarding you with questions. Take your time, Jun-san. Thank you. Heh. <laughs> it hurts. Why is it so difficult to keep this up all of a sudden? I'm supposed to be used to it already. It's alright. If anything, they might just call on his family to let them know we're here. And Yurata is going to be arriving soon. So that should be good, too. H he is? Hmm? Yeah. We were messaging each other when Akiyoshi-san first let us know about what happened. He said he was only about five minutes behind us. We were messaging you, too, but I'm guessing you didn't have time to check your phone. I... He's... Shoichi-san will... He... Hey, hey, what's wrong? Take a deep breath, okay? You don't need to be looking so worried. I'm sure Yuichi-san will be all right. Ugh, what a pain. Sai-san shows up around the corner, rubbing the back of her neck while dragging her feet. Let me guess, only family is loud inside. If you knew about that, you could have saved me the trouble of going up to ask. I ended up arguing with the nurse. That's not good. This is a hospital, Mizuguchi-san. Please control your temper. I know that. I just got frustrated. Besides, it wasn't me who knew about it. Jun-san told me. They kept him from going inside for the same reason before. Oh, right. I'm sorry, Jun-kun. I shake my head, wearing a smile on my face. It's okay. Don't worry about it. I tried asking them to let Yuichi's family know we're here. The nurse told me they'd get back to us in a few minutes. At least it's progress. One step closer to getting in, right? Not fast enough. In the meantime, we don't have any idea what's going on. I, I'm scared. Not knowing anything scares me. I know what you mean. Uh, of course. Of course they'd think like that. I should have said something about it sooner. Of course they'd worry. They don't know that he'll recover. They don't know anything. And I've been keeping quiet just because I don't want to deal with feeling guilty. That's awful of me. He'll... Yuichi-san will be fine. He's still unconscious, but th they said he's not in danger. R really? Is that true? Did you hear that from the doctors? Yeah, b before I had my my panic attack. Th then they escorted me out until I... That's... Oh man, it's such a relief. I don't know what I'd do if... This... This is bad. I, I can't let them get so happy over it. B because the full news, it it'd be bad of me not to not tell them. I, I have to tell them. But Yuichi-san, he... Oh, what is it? Is there more to it? Is... His... Saya. The whine of the hospital door sliding open is drowned right away by a loud voice shouting from the entrance, running our way in a hurry. Shoichi-kun, you're finally here! Uh, of course I'm here! The taxi got stuck in traffic two blocks away from here, so I had to get out and run. Is everything okay? What happened? Do you guys know anything yet? First of all, calm down. This is a hospital. You're not supposed to be running and screaming in here. This isn't time for- 
No, no, Kun is right. Please calm down first. If you make a scene, you're going to disturb the staff and other patients. Shoichi-san groans angrily, shifting on his feet, crossing his arms and clicking his tongue. All right, fine. Just tell me what you've heard already. The staff wouldn't tell us anything. His family are the ones who have to decide whether or not to... Whether... To decide who to tell or not. What? Then call them the fuck down here! We don't have to... Calm down! Like I said... Like I was saying, Jun-kun was inside for a little bit, so he filled us in on some of what happened. Shoichi-san looks down at me, his angry eyes suddenly staring so deep into me that it feels like they could drill a hole in my head. He did? How come he was allowed inside and we're not? I... I... Yurata, how many times do we have to tell you to calm down? Jun-san was with Yuichi-san when it happened. He's already shaken up from the accident. He doesn't need you yelling at him, too. You... You saw what happened? Did you already tell them? N no, he was in the middle of it when you arrived. What? Then don't waste time! Tell me already! What the hell happened? How come Yuichi ended up in the hospital? Th that's... Sh Shoichi, settle down. Jun-kun was telling us what the doctors said. There's no need to get into the accident. You'll just... Screw that! This and that aren't the same thing! He can tell us about Yuichi's state and the accident just fine! Shoichi! I, th that... The car... It... I was... Yuichi-san, he... Hey, Jun-san, calm down. We already said there's no need to... It was my fault! Without pausing to come up with my words, I blurt out what I've been thinking this entire time. A little bump in my chest purse happily, whispering in my head words that only I can hear. That only I can think. Yes, that's right, it was your fault. If you weren't there, Yuichi-san wouldn't have gotten hurt. My friends, they all stare at me with wide open eyes. I can just about hear the thoughts racing in their heads. They probably have no idea what I mean. They probably don't want to believe me. But it's true. There's no point in refusing to believe it. Just what is that supposed to mean? I, I, there was a car, and I didn't see the red light. You would just he, he push. Before I realize it, I'm grabbed by the collar of my shirt and pulled up to my feet. Shoichi! Sai-san cries out, but I am soon spun around and slammed against the nearby wall, knocking the wind out of me. Shoichi-san wasn't gentle with me, with me in the slightest. Instead, he stares at me with bared fangs, looking angrier than I've ever seen. Yet, I don't feel scared. I actually don't feel much at all. What the hell is that supposed to mean, huh? Yurata, what are you doing? Let him- SHUT UP! I can barely see the other two from behind Shoichi-san. They seem completely shocked, frozen in place. What the hell is that supposed to mean, Kobayashi? Are you telling me you're the one who was going to get hit? Are you- Fucking telling me! Yuichi was run over because he had to push you out of the way! Even though my brain is racing with a clarity I've never felt before, all words seem to get stuck in my throat. This... This is a scary feeling. Even so, I'm still not scared. Not gonna say anything! That's as good as agreeing, you piece of shit! This is all your fucking fault! But Shoichi! As if strings holding them in place were suddenly cut, Sai-san and Keisuke-san run up to us, grabbing Shoichi-san and trying as hard as they can to pull him away. But he doesn't move an inch. Yurata, stop it! You're going to hurt him! Like I fucking care! This is all your fault! Yuichi getting hurt! All of it! Sh Shoichi, stop! I hear a few screams of confusion behind us. Probably the other people in the waiting room calling for the staff. Eh. Uh, this place is going to turn into chaos now. Is... Is this my fault too? Am I going to mess things up wherever I go? You, 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 why the hell did you have to show up? You, you, it was, it'd have been fine if you weren't here. We'd have been fine. Sai-san gasps, suddenly trying to pull even harder. But even with these two trying their best, Shoichi-san seems to be so strong that they have no chance. And neither do I. I try squirming away, but my body is so tightly pinned against the wall that I won't budge at all. So I decided to just give in. What's the point anyway? If- I- this- this isn't fair! I've been here this entire time! I've been with him this entire time! What- what gives you the right to just walk in and take him away from me?! Shoichi, stop! Not now, you'll regret- I said shut up!
Why? 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 Why the hell did he have to latch onto you so goddamn hard? I've I've been with him this whole time. I've loved him this whole time. So why is it you that got him? Uh, I knew it. Shoichi san, you you fell for him too. This this isn't fair. First you steal him away from me, and now you fucking break him. Go to hell! I swear to God, I'll fucking out. I. I... Shoichi-san starts to shake, his grip on me getting looser and looser. His whole body lurches forward, his voice breaking more and more. Before I notice it, he rests his forehead on my shoulder. I'll be right back. Before I notice, he rests his forehead on my shoulder. I will be right back again. All right. Before I notice it, he rests his forehead on my shoulder. That's... That's not fair. I was here first, so... Why? Why does he look at you with those eyes? Why... Why do you look at me like that? Even though you're hurting him. Why was it you instead of me? Shoichi-san's entire body goes limp. All the anger and aggression disappears in a storm of tears. June, I, I'm sorry. I'm so fucking sorry, June. This isn't fair. I, I'm not being fair. Irata. Keisuke san's voice echoes behind Shoichi san, confused and worried. Their grips on Shoichi san go slack just as well, staring at the crying husky with worry. I, I'm sorry, June. I've been so unfair to you. I, I was so jealous and and afraid. I didn't want to lose him to anyone, but then you came and I, I... Oh god, I've been terrible to you. I'm being terrible to you. I'm such a bad friend. I've been such a bad friend to you, June. I I said such horrible things to you, but I, I can't... I can't be this person. It's... It's not your fault. I know that. I just... I, I wanted so bad to blame you. Shoichi-san sobs loudly, completely breaking down on my chest. It hurts. Please, stop it. I don't want to hear you say these things anymore. Just, just say it's my fault. Just tell me I'm in the wrong. I have no business being here, so, so don't. June, please, please forgive me. Forgive me, June. I, I know it's not your fault. If, if you and just to push you away, then, then I... Please, don't. I can't, I can't take it. Not this. You're out of, uh, you... Shoichi-kun. There are voices and murmurs beyond us. Sounds of footsteps, too. Did they call security? Ah, crap. I... Why am I... Why am I crying now? I... I couldn't cry before, so... Why now? Don't... Don't be nice to me. Don't say these kind things to me. If you do, then I... I can't pretend I'm alright anymore. I don't want to cry in front of everyone. I can't let them know. Stop it! Why won't the tears stop? Irata, I, I think they called security. It'd be better if we waited outside until you, um... But, what about Yuichi? Jun-san told me a little bit about his state. I can fill you in outside. So, please, let's, let's not make more of a scene, okay? Shoichi-san nods, sniffling one more time. He pulls away from me, turning around to face Keisuke-san and the little crowd that formed because of this whole scene. I, I'm sorry for, for disturbing... I'll, Go calm down outside! Just like I thought, there are already a few security guards standing just a f just a few steps away, like they just arrived. Keisuke-san places a hand on Shoichi-san's back, gently leading him to the door. The crowd disperses little by little, but not before the guards shoot us a couple last wary looks. 
That... Are you alright? Shoichi didn't hurt you, did he? I wiped my tears on the cuff of my shirt, shaking my head. I'm... Fine. Saison puts a hand on my shoulder, leading me back to my previous seat and sitting right next to me. I'm so sorry about that. Shoichi, he... I... I suspected it. Huh? That he had feelings for you, Uchi-san. I could kind of tell. Yeah. He's been really good at hiding it for the most part, but today... Well, not just today, I guess. He's been acting pretty cold to you lately, too. That's... okay. I... I'd have felt the same way if I were in his place. It's not like... I haven't felt jealous of how close he is to Yuichi-san, too. But... But now really isn't the time for that. Yuichi-san, he... hurt his knee. His knee? I nod, suddenly feeling a rush of courage coming out of nowhere. Now that I'm all cried out, it just feels a little bit easier to say it. To accept it. He, he'll he need surgery for his knee. The doctor said he won't be able to play tennis anymore. Sayasan's eyes slowly go wide. It probably takes a while for my words to sink in. I don't blame her. I don't want to believe it either. It's, it's so cruel. Why did Yuichi-san of all people have to get hurt like that? It's not fair. I... Yuichi-san, he... Are, are you... Are you serious? I nod. Now that all those feelings I'd been bottling up come crashing down, my head feels so fuzzy, so full. It hurts. Like there's something pulsating on the back of my head. It hurts real bad. Yuichi! Oh no! You're taking this a lot better than I did. No, I'm really not. I just have to stay strong. Right now, there are a lot of people around me who need support. I can deal with all this later. Helping my friends is more important. Sayasan, how, how do you manage to be so strong? Strong? Me? You've got to be joking. I'm not strong at all, you know, just good at car compartmentalizing. I can guarantee you that I'll break down once it's safe for me to do so. <laughs> After all, Yuichi and I, we plan on going pro together. We're going to travel to the US together and help each other through it. I... I can't even begin to tell you how devastated I am. Saya-san. His family must have taken it pretty hard. Right now, I'm really worried about Misaki-san. First her husband, and now... Her... Husband? Just then, those words flash inside my mind again. He died in a car accident when I was six. Didn't pay enough attention before crossing the street. He got hit by a car, and... My eyes go wide. My chest hurts. I can't breathe. N no! Yuichi-san! He... he Hold me! I... No way. No, no, no way! This is too much! This is too cruel! Why... Why did it have to happen again? Now with Yuichi-san! Oh, because of me! This... This is the same! Yeah, that's why I'm worried. For Misaki-san, this whole thing is probably her worst nightmare. Oh, but don't you start blaming yourself for it. It's not your fault. It's just a sad coincidence. Kind of scary, too. I'm shaking. I can't stop shaking. Junkun, please don't take this badly. I I'm not. I'm okay. No, you're not okay. W what do you mean? I can tell. You're you're really good at pretending to be okay, but I can still tell. What? That's that's not true. Don't feel bad. I'm usually pretty good at these things. It's hard to keep secrets like these for me. And I know you're struggling right now, and that's okay. But you don't have to pretend like you are okay. Saya san. You know, even Yuichi kun was beginning to realize it. Even though he's dense to a fault, I guess that's just because you guys have been spending so much time together lately. Whatever you're going through, you don't have to keep it to yourself the entire time. It's all right to need help. Everyone does once in a while. Or, what? Do you seriously think these guys would be able to make it through a week without me around to give them support? But, what about when you're the one who needs support? <laughs> you don't need to worry about that. Unlike you four anxious messes, I actually have more than one group of friends. I have other people I can lean on when things get too hard. So, really, don't feel too bad, okay? These kinds of things, well, I don't want to say that they happen, but it's not your fault, you know? We'll cope. Somehow, you have to in order to keep going. It's not going to be easy, but we'll be around to support you, Ichikun. Although, man, I really don't want to have to be the one who tells the boys about it. Still, I feel like I have to. Saya san, I'm, I'm so. Don't apologize, silly. It's okay. Don't put so much pressure on yourself. I'm sure Yuichi kun would say the same. Hell, he's been so caring and attentive towards you lately. If anything, I feel like I should be thanking you instead. 
thanking me? Why? Because you might not realize it, but Yuichi Kun has been changing ever since you showed up. Every now and again, I can see a glimpse of the old Yuichi Kun again, even though I'd almost given up on him going back to his old self. And, well, it's thanks in large part to you. I I don't know what it was that you did. Shoichi Kun and I have been trying so hard to help him over the past three years, but we just weren't getting through. But ever since you showed up, something inside of him has started changing. He's been he's been trying his best. Little by little, he's getting involved with other people again. He's putting in genuine effort. But it's not like he's just been fixed as if by magic, but just seeing him improving is more than I could hope for. So really, thank you. This might be a huge bump in the road, but I have faith we can get through it. That he can get through it. saya -san. Crap. I should say something now, shouldn't I? But what? I don't feel like I deserve this. I've been selfish. I've been manipulative at times. Yuichi Kun is the one that's been helping me. He's the one that's been changing me ever since I met him. If it's because of him that I started feeling a little bit more hopeful every day. So I've done my best to try and keep him around me. Even playing dumb or putting on an act. Anything and everything I could do to not to lose him. And yet, I still feel so happy hearing this. Why does it make me so relieved? Seriously, you fours are a real emotional disaster. None of you guys know how to talk honestly about your feelings. It's no wonder you ended up butting heads all the time. Sorry, but... Thanks. Of course. A familiar little dog walks around the corridor, his tiny steps echoing dryly around the room. There's a lot of reverb in here. I don't know why I suddenly thought of it, but it's all I can notice now. Aki-kun! Hey there, Cyanie. Where are the others? A nurse came by the room to tell us that you guys were here. We had a bit of a problem. Shoichi Kun needed some time outside to cool off. Uh, oh, I see. Did Junsan tell you guys already? Bits and pieces, mostly. Shoichi kind of blew up before we could tell him anything. Keiku knows that Yuichi is unconscious and will recover, but I'm the only one who stuck around to hear about his knee. I, y yeah, I don't, I don't even know where to start. Akiyoshi-san, he's handling this a lot better than I thought he would. I can't really tell what it is, but somehow he seems a bit older. He's definitely a lot more mature than I'd expect from someone his age. Are there any news? Not really. He's still unconscious. The doctor says he could wake up at any time now. Mom wanted a second opinion about his knee. They took some more exams and all because of it. But no luck. This is really it, huh? Yeah, this is really it. Aniki's career is over. Hearing those words rolling off of Aki-kun's mouth is so plainly. It's almost more than I can take. I didn't even realize it, but I was still holding on to some hope this whole time. That this wasn't real. That there was another way. But real life isn't that nice. The doctors will tell him once he's awake. For now, I was told to go home. Visiting hours are over for today. What? So we're not even going to be allowed in? No, they're pretty strict about visitors in the inpatient ward. Only one family member is allowed to stay overnight. Everyone else has to go home. I I'm sorry. I know it's not what you guys wanted to hear. We we'll need to come back tomorrow. They said he'll probably be awake by then, so... Oh, that's a bummer. I guess I'll go tell the guys. Better do it now while they're outside. Last chance of Shoei- Last chance of Shoichi causing a scene. Akiyoshi-san? Yeah? There's something I haven't told you guys yet. I- I really think you should know. Ah, well, wait! Jun-kun! If it's what I think it is, then ma- I shake my head, trying as best as I can to stay calm. I can't keep running away from it. Even if they end up hating me for it, I need to tell the truth. They deserve to know. The accident. I was feeling sick. I tried rushing home from the station. I didn't notice red light. He, Yuichi-san pushed me out of the way of a car. That's, that's why he... There. I finally managed to say it properly. It, it might not be the whole truth. They don't need to know the specifics about my condition. But it's enough. Akiyoshi-san stares at me in silence. His eyes so wide that it looks like they might bulge out of his head any second now. Sai-san looks away, fidgeting on her spot and biting her lip. Even if she talked about it not being my fault, it must hurt a lot to hear it said again. After all, how could it not? That's... I don't... Oh, man. I don't know what to say. I know it's my fault, and I, I understand if you all end up hating me. I... I broke Yuichi-san. Akiyoshi-san shakes his head. He puts a hand on his chest, closing his eyes and taking a deep breath. I don't think so. And I don't think Aniki would think that either. But I, if anything, I think I'd prefer this over you getting hurt. It's just sad. It'll probably be harder for mom. I don't think she'd get mad either, but I can't really tell with all that's happened. Yeah, I'm worried about Misaki-san, too. At least, thank you for telling us the truth. It can't have been easy. How can 
you all be so forgiving? I don't know. I do feel bitter. It's not like that feeling isn't there. But Aniki has always helped me. Even when I was such an annoying brat. It's my turn to help him now. I don't have time to sulk. Akiyoshi-san, you're so mature. Scarily mature. What kind of childhood did you have to grow up so fast? Well, that's that, I guess. We should probably get going. Need to at least tell the guys before we go. Plus, I want to take Aki-kun home, too. Thank you, Sayani. You're welcome to come with us, Jun-kun. I, I think I need some time to think right now. I'll probably head home alone. Uh, are you sure? The hospital is kind of far from your neighborhood. Yeah, I'll get a taxi. I'll probably need to tell my parents about what happened when I get home anyway. I'll just talk to the nurses real quick to see if there's anything I need to do about these scratches on my elbow. This will be a difficult one to explain. I'm just glad I managed to tell the hospital staff not to call them. If they were here, this whole thing would have been ten times worse. Oh, okay then. Just be careful, alright? Of course. Good night, Jun-kun. Night, Jun-san. I wave them goodbye, silently watching the two walk out of the door. Oh, shit. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. That's, that's pretty cool, Ion Agenda. I wave them goodbye, silently watching the two walk out the door. Now I should probably check in with Akagi-san before I leave. I walk up to the nurse's station, meeting one of the familiar faces sitting behind it. The head nurse that handles everything in the front station. A different nurse than the one that leads to us to Yuichi-san's room earlier. Good evening, Hoshikawa-san. Kobayashi-kun, good evening. Is everything alright? Visitation hours are over, so I'm afraid you won't be able to check in with your friend. No, it's not that. Um, is Kimura-san still in? I wasn't fully honest earlier. Back before the accident happened, my heart, it, it happened again. Her face stiffens up right away. The gazelle, Hoshikawa-san, stares at me blankly for a couple seconds before picking up the phone. I'll pay Jakagi-san to check up on you. In the meantime, I'll call Kamiki-san and have her take you to an examination room. Okay, do you think I'll be able to head home today still? That'll be up to the doctor to decide. I'm sorry, Kobayashi-kun. It's okay, you're just doing your job, and thanks for not calling my parents earlier, Hoshikawa-san. The gazelle bites her lip, nodding. Well, you are an adult. If you say you don't want them to be told, I can't do anything about it. <laughs> I guess that's true. I'm escorted to a room by Kamiki-san. After a few minutes, Akagi-san, the polar bear doctor from earlier, comes downstairs to meet with me. A huge scolding for keeping my earlier cardiac event from them until now, but after a few hours being held back for tests and further examination, I'm cleared to get back home. Just a mild episode is what he said. Definitely didn't feel like one earlier. By the time I get home, my parents are already plenty worried about me. I guess I messed up by not checking my phone all day. Having to tell them about what happened was exhausting. I could only handle about five minutes of their coddling before I had enough and locked myself in my bedroom. My bed is just as soft as ever, but I don't feel even a little bit com comforted lying in it now, even though it tended to always be my safe place. Yuichi-san, will you be able to forgive me? Is it okay for me to get to see you tomorrow? I really hope you don't hate me. While I'm stuck thinking these things, all the day's exhaustion catches up to me at once. June 24th, day 27th, Saturday. Sweetie, is everything okay? It's a little bit past 10. Aren't you supposed to be out already? Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm coming out. Crap, I didn't notice how much time had passed while I tried to fix my fur in the morning. I'm glad I have this spot right around one of my eyes. It makes it a bit easier to hide the fact I haven't been sleeping very well. Yeah. Well, well, look who's finally decided to come out. Mom is by the kitchen counter, pouring herself a cup of tea. She looks my way as soon as she hears my door, teasing me with a smile on her face. It took a little longer than I thought it would to get my fur under control. It does look right about time to get you a trim. Maybe we'll schedule one for next week. Do we really have to? It takes so long. Well, of course it does. We have fur covering our entire body. Just be glad you weren't born a sphinx. It would beat having to get naked for a stranger just to have my fur trimmed. Pfft, what's the big deal? I notice Dad sitting by the Katatsu, reading a newspaper. He speaks without even bothering to look up at me. 
This makes me wonder why they even make physical newspapers nowadays. That's easy for you to say. You don't care about being nude. And by the way, thanks for at least bothering to put on some clothes this morning. I've had to work in a bit. It's the only reason why. Really? Usually have Saturdays off. Isn't working for seven days straight a little rough? Yeah, well, tell that to the asshole who decided to ram a storefront with his truck. They have a bunch of officers redirecting traffic and whatnot, so I have to go in and cover for it. Mom walks up to Dad, slapping him on the back of his head while sipping her tea. Ouch! What's the big idea? Language. Sheesh. You'd think a guy would be allowed to curse in his own home. Dad. It's hardly the first time. You should know better by now. Are you really going to head to the hospital again, sweetie? You haven't been allowed in to see him even once so far. Yeah, I know. But you never know. Today might be different. Dad snorts, shaking his head. You know, but you never know. You know, but you never know. That's a doozy. You know what I meant! Yeah, yeah, either way, this whole thing is a bit messed up if you ask me. It's just cruel of him to not let you in. Well, it's not like that. Truth be told, I've been going to the hospital every day to try and see Yuichi-kun, but... When I got to the hospital the morning after the accident, I found his family in the waiting room. Akiyoshi-kun was pacing around with a really annoyed look on his face while his mother tried to calm him down. Hi, morning. Ah, Kobayashi-kun. Good morning, it's quite early. Y yeah, I wanted to come by as soon as visitation hours started. <laughs> Good luck with that. Honey, none of that. Is something the matter? Yuichi woke up a little after Aki left last night. He's mostly fine. He was talking responsive for a while, but... When he got the news, he agreed to the surgery, but he asked to be left alone. He kicked Mom out of his room in the middle of the night. What? Yes, well, I can understand that. He needs time to process it still. He's not allowing any visitors right now, so I'm afraid you might not be able to see him just yet. Uh, oh. You know, you could try just storming into his room and demanding he talk to you. At sushi! What? It's what I do. Don't give your son bad advice. He don't get kicked out of the hospital. Aw. That was almost sounding like a good idea for a second there. Just make sure you eat something before you leave. I don't need you fainting on the streets. I won't faint just because I skipped breakfast. Not that I was planning to anyway. Are you sure? You're so frail, and with your condition, I just worry. I'm not an invalid. Mom sighs, hanging her head and raising a hand to make a gesture for me to pipe down. Okay, okay, point taken. Just take care of yourself. I take plenty good care of myself. I can't control and it flares up. Besides... My condition has nothing to do with my stomach. Food is still important, kid. If you're running on fumes, you won't get anything done. I look down at my stomach, grabbing it for a second and feeling my belly squish under my fingers. Pretty sure I could afford to skip a few meals. Going to the kitchen counter, I grab a slice of toast that had already been laid out for, for me by mom. Same as every morning. Agreed. June is best boy. I take a seat by the Katatsu. If it were up to me, I'd go to the hospital while I eat, but mom always insists I sit down to eat with them. <laughs> I guess it's all of us. We've all let ourselves go a little bit over the years. Not me. I have always been in shape. Ball shape, you mean. Hey! <laughs> Sweetie, don't make fun of your father. Although it is true. <laughs> I don't get you two's obsession with always looking nice. I've always been a little bit on the chubbier side, and I'm happy like this. It's not like I'm unhappy. I just miss being able to play soccer. Kid, it's not your shape that keeps you from playing so- Ow! Mom reaches around the table, grabbing Dad by the ear and twisting it. Be nice to your son! Ow, 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 ow. I got it, I got it! I didn't mean it like that! <laughs> yeah, I guess that's true. I didn't stop playing soccer because I got in the shape. I got in the shape because I stopped playing soccer. We can always find something else you could do to stay active. I'm sure your doctor could recommend some kind of class that we might sign you up for. N no thanks, I already have my hands full as it is. I don't think I'd have time for that. Besides, my medical bill's already super high. We don't need to add something else on top of it. Are you sure? It wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, you say that, but I'm sure keeping on top of my studies and focusing on the piano is already pretty difficult. This school is much stricter than my previous one, too. Mom and Dad share a look with each other, raising a couple eyebrows. We could try putting you in a cram school. Yeah, stop! No more extracurriculars. I just said I have enough on my plate. Seriously, stop trying to spend your money. There, I finished eating. Maybe excuse now. What? Are you just going to eat and run? Pretty much. I'm already late. I already have my phone and my wallet on my pocket, so all I need to do is grab my keys from the front door. Bye bye. I'll see you guys later. Have a good day. See you, kid. Make sure to text us if anything happens. And try not to stress me to me, son out. I will, and I won't. Bye. I take a deep breath as soon as I close the door behind me. It's getting harder and harder to keep up this routine every day, but I know I can't let them start worrying about me again or it'll never stop, especially now. Just put on a happy face.
Take deep breaths. I start the short walk to the nearest taxi stand, getting on a car to the hospital. As soon as I walk past the doors, I feel a little bit of a chill. Not just because of the air conditioning, which I'll admit is really, really nice, especially with these clothes that I'm wearing, but because I HATE this place! Having to come here every day this past week when I already spend way more time than I'd like in here is starting to get to me. yuichi san can't you just go home already? I really don't like having to come here. Looking around the waiting room, I see three familiar faces sitting together at a far corner of the room. For the past week, I've tensed up a little t every time I saw shoichi san but things have been okay for the most part. Awkward, but okay. Morning! Good morning, Ju good morning, Jun san One random thing that I've noticed this past week is that Keisuke san seems to have switched to calling me Jun san on a permanent basis. Before, he would sometimes let it slip, but he called me by my last name most of the time. It's kind of nice. Morning, how are you doing? I'm okay, didn't get much sleep. Yikes, sleepless nights are the worst. Right? So long as you're feeling okay, that should be good enough, right? Y yeah, totally. I don't know where to go with this. Um... So, any news on Yuichi-san? Is his family in his room by any chance? Not really. They actually haven't arrived yet. Yuichi-san is still refusing any visitors. Really? I was hoping... It can't be easy for him. Give him some time. It's not like we're asking for much. We just want to talk to him and see how he is. He can't even walk right now. How do you think he is? R right that's a good point. I'm surprised his family isn't here yet. Hasn't Mikasi-san... Misaki-san been spending the night every night? Day? She has, but Akikun has also been insisting she go home since she's so exhausted. It's not surprising that she finally caved. It's a good thing, too. She seemed like she's been running a little ragged for the past couple days. Given the situation, can you blame her? It's not like I said it was without reason. Sayasan gives- It's time to drink water. It's time to drink water. It's time to drink water. Ah! Liquid! It's time to drink water. Ah! Ah! Liquid. Saison gives him a Saison patented gentle pat on the back. I wonder if they'll even come today at all. Maybe they just gave on being allowed in. Hardly. Mikasi's son would, Misaki's son would probably be clinging to his bed frame even now if she could. I doubt Akikun is too happy about it either. He's probably just making sure his mom actually gets some sleep before she's allowed to come back. Does anyone else find it a bit strange that he's the one pretty much playing parent here? I don't think this is the time to be mentioning that, uh, but I do think the same. Misaki-san can be pretty intense when it's something she cares about. I feel a cold shiver running all the way down my spine just hearing that. Is that true? How intense are we talking about? Uh, quite a bit? I'm not sure how to answer you here. Why do you ask? I haven't told her about the accident. I told Akikun, but he assured me he wouldn't tell her until I was ready to. What? You didn't tell her?! Goes without saying, but Sai-san told the guys about the details of the accident I'd left out. She thought it would be better for Shoichi-san to be told as far away from me as possible, just so there would be no risk of another explosion. But for a moment, she told me, he was really, really sorry when he heard it happen because I was trying to rush home from being sick. Especially because, since he took a peek at my records when I first transferred in, he let me know long ago that he knows about my condition. It makes me feel a tiny little bit guilty to have him know and feel bad about that when no one else does. Which means me, because... Misaki-san is the only person to not know yet. It never looked like a good time. And you thought waiting until she was properly rested so she could strangle you better would be a good time? Smart. Don't say that. You don't know Misaki-san well. She's not that kind of person. I don't know. I wouldn't put it past an angry mother to lash out over her son being hurt. Again, she is not that kind of person. Thank you for the support, Shoichi-san. Um, yeah, of course. This does make me wonder, should we perform a perimeter around Kobayashi before he tells her anything or anything? I am not going to repeat myself for the third time. She is not that kind of person! Um, you just repeated yourself there. Dude, whose side are you on? No one's, I swear! It feels weird. You've been slowly going back to normal, having more lighthearted conversations and joking around again. I miss the laughter and the fun atmosphere, but a part of me still feels guilty. How could we be laughing and playing around like this when Yuichi-san is still in this state? But at the same time, I know this is something we need. If there's one thing I learned from my time in therapy is that people need distractions to keep them from going through tough times. It's not like I don't understand. But I still feel guilty. In fact, I can pretty much tell that everyone else thinks the same, even though they won't say it. They try their hardest, but their smiles aren't anywhere near as wide as normal. They still frown a bit even when smiling. Their laughter is just a tiny bit forced. Not to flatter myself or anything, but I got really good at reading people from years observing them. 
and to try my best at fitting in and staying no noticed. I just don't know if it's something I should bring up at all. It's okay, Junkun. We'll protect you. Speak for yourself. If anything happens, I'm getting out of the way as soon as possible. Why? Shoichi-kun! Don't look at me like that. I'm not braving the wrath of an enraged mother for anything or anyone. Gee, thanks. You're very welcome. That is so mean. I call it survival of the fittest. Hmm. What? Saison reaches across from her seat, poking me in the belly a couple times before I can swat her hand away. Hey! No touching! I guess you have a point. I didn't mean that kind of fit. Not appreciated. Oh, I was just trying to lighten up the mood. What are you two, children? Come on, Arushihara, you don't have to be so glum the whole time. I am not glum. Some people might not agree. Who says I care what they think? Uh-huh, the odds of me believing you on that are zero. Piss off. Shoichi-san chuckles, covering his mouth with his hand. Both him and Sai-san seems to be trying their best to improve the mood in the group. Now, I already expected that from Sai-san, but I really didn't think Shoichi-san would join in on it. In fact, I thought he would be the most down right now. But maybe that's exactly why he's trying to be positive. Sometimes I wish I were a mind reader. Although it would be pr probably only take me about two seconds to start abusing it. So many interesting memories to read. Oh no, don't go there. Is everything all right, Junkun? Uh-huh. Yeah, what do you ask? You're spacing out of nowhere. Doesn't he always do that? True, but I don't know. I guess I'm just a bit on edge right now. I don't want him getting lost in bad thoughts. I promise I wasn't having bad thoughts. In a sense. Okay, so long as you just don't start getting depressed on us again. Uh, yeah. I guess I was hoping Sayasan would forget how much I was last week was asking for too much. That was the first time I let the mask crack that much in front of her. Of course she'd be worried. I promise I'm alright. I was just wondering about something else. Oh, what was it? Games! That's a safe one. I'll run with that. Games? Like, now? Kind of a weird time to be thinking of games, don't you think? Really? I just thought since we're all waiting around until someone shows up that we can talk to, it'd be nice to have some games to pass the time. Oh, like that new RPG that released two weeks ago. Trailblazing Skies. That one looks really cool. Hey, I've heard of that one. I was thinking of getting it, but my backlog is already way too big as is. Must be nice having so many gaming systems. I only have my old Ruby One. Plus the Raycast Yuichi son lent to me. I, but I don't have any games for that other than the two he gave me with it. I mean, Sorokun lent me his Ruby Slim Portable when I was in the hospital, but I gave that one back already. You seem to get by on borrowing stuff often. I could lend you some of my games for the Raycast if you'd like. I have quite a few, and most of them are RPGs that I have no time to get to yet, so feel free. The Raycast is the ultimate console for RPGs, after all. Dear God, please tell me we're not getting trapped in another two-hour conversation about RPGs with you two. They happen at least three times a week as is. My brain can't take any more of it. Now who's the one being glum? I will hit you. Good, I managed to distract them away from that previous subject. They tr tried and tested strategies never fail. Come on, Shoichi-san, we both like video games. What's so wrong with it? My brain's all over the walls if you keep this up. That is that is what. Whoa! That go dark way too fast! Shoichi-san makes a mock gesture as if he put a gun to his own head and fired it. Could you please not joke about that? We're in a hospital, you know. I can't even be believed to describe how inappropriate it is. Oh, you're right, my bad. <laughs> you got scolded! For God's sake, when did I become the den mother to three annoying children? Three? Am I an annoying child, too? Oh, uh, um, well, I didn't mean, I guess, um... Oh, I guess I made him sweat a little by accident with my question. That's actually pretty funny. I really have the chance to poke fun back at them. Especially without it being obvious. I think I'll run with it. What did I do? I was only talking about games with you before Shoichi-san interrupted us. That's... Uh, you're right, but you see, when I said three, I really actually meant... Give it up, Urushihara, you're just fumbling at this point. S sorry I really didn't mean to call you a child, Jun-san. Oh, okay then! The fact that you accept it so easily only makes me feel worse. That's half the fun! A bit mean, but definitely fun. It's good payback for how often they tease me while thinking I didn't notice. Morning. My ears switch to the sound of the hospital door opening. But first it... But since it happens pretty often, I don't really pay much attention at first. Then when I hear Akiyoshi-san's voice calling out to us, I quickly turn around to look in that direction. Good morning, Michimi-san! Akiyoshi-san! Osu! I mean, morning! How are you, Mitsuki-san? Did you get some rest? Are you feeling better? That is very kind of you to ask, Sai-chan. I'm feeling refreshed, yes. As soon as we got home, she passed out right away. Didn't even eat. I suppose I was a lot more worn out than I thought. That's really not good, ma'am. You should take better care of yourself. You're one to talk. What did I 
behind you! Constantly skipping on food and sleep so you can practice the piano? Yeah, you're definitely one to talk. Boo! It's not the same thing! And this isn't the time to bring that stuff up, so... Shush! I don't know why, but seeing you kids having fun like that makes me feel relieved somehow. We're not kids! Well, some of us aren't. I'll pretend I didn't hear that or snapping at your friends. We'll be going to the front desk to ask about Yuichi-san. I'll let you know whatever they tell us. Do you want me to hold your bag for you, Misuki-san? I know you have it full of things for Yuichi-san, and you shouldn't be lugging around that much weight when you're tired. I'm not an old lady, you know. Although, I suppose it wouldn't hurt. Misuki-san and Akiyoshi-kun walk closer to us so she can hand him her purse. As soon as she does, Akiyoshi-kun leans towards me, whispering in my ear. Are you going to tell her anytime soon? If you wait too long, Aniki might end up telling her instead. <gasps> I wasn't expecting to get that, that out of the blue. Akiyoshi-san, please, have more tact! Soon, t today! Okay, just checking. Come on, Aki. I have a feeling your brother will finally let us in today. I really hope so. The two walk away, turning around the corridor and heading towards the nurse's station. Do you suppose Yuichi couldn't really let us in today? I don't know. I hope so. I try not have to think about it anymore, really. I can't believe it's been over a week since the last time we've talked to him. Uh-oh. Th the mood is tanking all of a sudden, and things were going so well for a while, too. Um, is there anything I can do to help out? I, I, uh... They do say mothers have some kind of motherly intuition. My guess is that Misuki-san is probably right. You actually believe that, mumbo-jumbo? What? Don't call it that. That's mean. I'm sorry, but this pseudoscience-y stuff is all crap anyway. Too far, man. It's okay. I don't mind. I really believe things will start getting better today. Hmm, I do... I suppose I do envy your optimism at the very least. Wow, look at you trying to be nice all of a sudden. After being a colossal ass, that is. Oh, shut up. It wasn't my intention. Optimism, huh? Fake it till you make it, I guess. Have to do my best to keep the spirits up. Wait, Aki! Out of nowhere, Misuki's son's voice echoes loudly down the hall. I don't even realize what's happening when the others have already jumped out of their chairs and run to her. As soon as we turn the corridor, we only see what seems to be the blurred shape of a small dog running down the curve and towards the elevators. Misuki's son is frozen in place for a second before she tries running after two, along with a couple shocked nurses. After we catch up, when we catch up to them, the elevator has already left our floor, with, with Misuki-san standing by the door, breathing heavily. What happened? But when the nurses told us, when the nurses said Yuichi had refused to see us again, he got really mad and ran out without warning. Oh no, I do not want to see him getting kicked out of the hospital. I, I don't think they do that. Hey, the second of just got here. We could, we could take it upstairs to get Akiyoshi-kun back before they have to call security. That is probably a good idea. Let go of me! We hear Akiyoshi-san's voice before we even see him. Once we get to the right floor, we rush down the hall towards Yuichi-san's room. As soon as we get there, we see Akiyoshi-kun desperately onto the doorframe to the door wall to the room while the nurse tries to pull him away. But please understand, your brother wants to be- I don't care! I want to see my brother! Aniki! Aniki! Aki! Michimiya-san calls out to him, only to be completely ignored. She rushes towards her son, with the four of us following behind her to try and help. We're not going to start dragging him away too, are we? I, I don't think I can do that to him. When we get to the door to try and reach him, without even thinking about it, I look up. I hold my breath for a second as I realize the door is open, giving me a clear view of the inside. Luigi son! So chaotic scene blends into the background for me as soon as I see him, lying on the bed and looking out the window as if he can't even hear us. Or just doesn't want to. Whatever the reason is, he doesn't react at all to the commotion. Akiyoshi-san keeps calling out, but Yuichi-san doesn't seem to give him any attention whatsoever. Akiyoshi, that's enough! Your brother needs space! You stop this right now! Mizuki-san reaches for his wrist, but he jerks his hand and tries to push her away, still struggling against the nurse. No! I want to be with him! Aniki! Ani! Nichan! For the first time, Yuichi-san's ears twitch. He turns his head, looking at us all standing in front of the open door. Raising his hand, he speaks. The first time I've heard his voice in over a week. It's okay. Aki can stay. Everyone freezes. The nurse's grip loosens for just a second, and Akiyoshi-kun takes that opportunity to get away from her, stepping inside the room. <gasps> Nichan! Akiyoshi-san walks to the side of his bed while the rest of us watch in silence. Yuichi-san places his hand on top of Akiyoshi-san's head, running his fingers through it and messing all the fur up. Stop it, Nichan! Good grief. Please, Akiyoshi-kun can stay, but unless he gives us permission to have you in his room, the rest of you really need to go downstairs. Don't make another scene. 
We won't. We're really sorry for this. I'm the one who should be apologizing. I didn't even keep a close enough eye on Akiyoshi. I didn't even know he was taking Yuichi's absence this badly. Those two really are a lot closer than they seem to be. Even though Yuichi-san complains about him being a pain a lot. Is that what having siblings is like? I kind of envy it. Having siblings can be really great. The rest of us go back to the elevator, returning to the ground floor without hanging around for too much longer. Even though it was short, I'm glad I got to see Yuichi-san again. Michimiya-san apologized profusely to the staff, hanging around in the waiting room with us until Akiyoshi-san would come downstairs. Although we still weren't allowed to visit him today, even getting a small glimpse of Yuichi-san was enough to raise the general mood by a lot. That feeling of tension hiding behind everyone's faces when they tried to smile went away for the most part. After a few more hours hanging around and waiting for any change, everyone left one by one a couple hours after the sun would start to set. I did realize after I was already home that with everything that happened, I completely forgot to tell Misaki-san about the reason for the accident. It's hot. I think I've been awake for the past 20 minutes now, but I still refuse to open my eyes. I feel really tired. Maybe the past few days have started catching up with me. What with me going to the hospital every single day to visit Yuichi-san. But still, that's just the bare minimum. After the part I played in putting him there, I should be there every single day beg begging for forgiveness. Or at least I would be, if he had even let us at all. We're still mostly sitting around outside the waiting room, hoping for something. Since that time when he caused a scene, Akiyoshi-san had been allowed inside every single day. It's only because of him that we've been kept the update. As for Misaki-san... Telling her didn't go as I expected. W wait Misaki-san! Three days ago, I finally decided that I couldn't keep it to myself anymore, and there was no point in looking for the right time either. Like there was ever a right time for telling someone that. Jun-kun, what is it? I was about to leave for work. Y yeah I know. She'd only come by to drop Akiyoshi-kun after school, after all. Truth is, there's something I need to tell you. From the look on your face, it sounds serious. It is. Very well. I'm listening. Um, well, truth is... At first, Misaki-san was shocked when I first started telling her about it. Her mouth and eyes were open wide, staring at me unflinching the entire time. The alo that alone made me even more terrified than I was before. But she continued to listen in silence as I told her everything. I was feeling sick, how I didn't notice the red light because of it. How Yoichi-san had to push me out of the way of a car because of it. Eventually, I ran out of words. I wanted to say more. More than anything, I wanted to explain myself. I wanted to be forgiven. If even I didn't deserve it. But the words wouldn't come out. Misaki-san watched me in silence for a while. I wondered what she might have been thinking. Maybe she hated me. Maybe she wanted me gone. Her expression told me nothing. And that was the scariest part. But then... You poor thing. You must have felt terrible this entire time. Huh? I will admit... That is a lot to take in all of a sudden. I wasn't sure what to think at first. Still, thank you for telling me, Jun-kun. That was very brave of you. You're, you're not angry? Why? Shouldn't you hate me for getting Yuichi-san involved in this? It's not my place to judge. The truth is, I failed as a mother. When Ken, their father, died, I swore to myself that I would never leave my children wanting. I made sure providing for them would be my number one priority. However, I see now there are more things to life than money. Yuichi had to basically raise himself from the time he was six years old, caring for his brother as soon as I came out of maternity leave. That is far too much pressure to put on a child. For all his quirks, and even if he may act childish at times, Yuichi was forced to mature beyond his years. At times, he was troubled dealing with that, I can tell. Still, I have utmost faith in my children. Whatever Yuichi did, I know it was his own decision. I cannot fault anyone for that. I shouldn't. And even if I could, I still wouldn't. I don't know you very well. It's true. What I've seen of you tells me that you are a good, kind boy. Besides, I don't think Yuichi would have gotten so attached to you if you weren't. I... I don't... You are far too young to be worrying over things that are outside of your power, Jun-kun. Whatever it is that happened, as tragic as it might have been, we'll adjust to it, and we'll go f and we'll grow from it. This isn't the first time our family deals with hardship. He might be struggling at the moment, but I believe in my son. I know he will bounce back from this. There will be a lot of soul searching to be had, but I know he'll move on. You should too, Misaki son. I th thank you. That was three days ago, but I still think about it all the time. 
Mizuki-san's words keep echoing inside my head whenever I'm alone and lost in thought. It was selfish of me to want to be forgiven, but that is exactly what she did. In her own little way, she saved me. At least just a little bit. The phone rings loudly out of nowhere, making me jump into a seated position on the bed. We're going to leave off here tonight. Ah! Ah! Anyways, stay safe, have a good night, and I will see you all tomorrow.